Okay, welcome everyone. I think we are going to get started. I expect some more people to file in, but it's going to be uh, like that. I th I think as we as we proceed. So first of all, welcome everyone to researching the researching Web three workshop. Uh, it will be going on today for the next three hours, and then tomorrow in the same time slot. I would also like to extend a, a warm invitation to all the folks that are around the globe, many of whom are either, very, it's very early for them or it's very late for you. And I'm very appreciative and feeling a little apologetic about making everyone sort of coordinate on uh, the North American Eastern Standard Time. Um, it's a nature of the beast. <clears throat> so my name is Quinn DuPont. I know many of you, Personally, uh, I, the others that I don't know, I may know of your research, and many of you are old friends, and I hope uh, to make some new future friends. So the work, the conference and the workshop are, it, it's a big experiment to begin with. And so I hope you take it with the sort of the, the appropriate uh, grain of salt as to what we're trying to accomplish. So I'll tell you a little bit more, more about myself, just very briefly, as by way of introduction. I, early on, about 10 years ago now, decided to invest a lot of energy and time into trying to understand um, everything that emerged out of Bitcoin. And then, of course, this is sort of blossomed today into this kaleidoscope of criminality and scammers and get-rich-quick uh, schemers and a whole bunch of builders and dreamers and everything that we might call Web3. As part of that, as many of you might know, I've been also very interested since uh, in decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs, really since the sort of the infamous 2016 DAO. Um, and what kind of brought about this convening today was about a year ago, I saw that the topic and the technology was, was flooding back into the popular imagination. And my hope was that we were going to start to see some certain amount of reality emerging out of this rather than just sort of what the, uh, the hopes and dreams that we saw before. It's interesting to me to see this reemerge because the gambit for today is that there is a genuine scientific pursuit that lies behind Web3. Certainly, some of the folks convening today are interested in making better technologies. Others are here to study how to use technologies to interact with one another. And then, of course, there's all the tough questions about values and ethics and legal and regulatory questions and these kinds of things. But what I hope and will emerge uh, from this workshop, or this conference and workshop, and then going forward, is that we're going to be able to come together as a scientific and scholarly community and going forward into future events as well, where we can learn about each other's research, we can support emerging scholars is very, very important, I think, for both uh, just as a that's the, the right thing to do, but also uh, highlight and showcase emerging scholars' work. I think that's really important. So we're going to be doing that this uh, uh, coming up shortly. And as well as uh, um, understanding how to better uh, educate and, and, and teach these materials. So very briefly, I'm just going to, uh, as by way of a, a short welcome here, just to mention a little bit sort of who we are and, and where, kind of where we're going. The first thing to note is that there is an attendees database. Uh, I ask people to sort of use this appropriately. It includes um, your, your email and your name, uh, your institutional affiliation, as best we can sort of represent this, as well as um, uh, some notion of your disciplinary connections. And the idea here is to surface this and make this available so that we can self-coordinate and self-organize throughout the activities. And so what, and to help facilitate that, what I will be doing at some point uh, shortly here is I'm gonna be opening up uh, Oh, just a, what I'm calling a talking research breakout room that'll be available throughout the, the proceedings. And at any point, if you, you know, not maybe 
terribly interested in the main track or if there's some you got some burning interests, you can head over to that break room, breakout room and um, you know conduct uh, you know some some chat about your research or whatever. So that, that'll be available throughout. So it'll be an experiment to see if the, how well that works. It's a virtual platform. It, my thinking is it uh, is to try to replicate the kind of conversations that might happen in the hallway, these sorts of things. And using that attendee database, you can then follow up with people and 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 um, pursue that independent of just the activities that we're up to today. So the chart you see is just a quick snapshot of some of the the what was reported on the the poll that uh, many of you filled out. Thank you for doing that. As you can sort of, I'll let you sort of interpret what this means. I, I, I don't think this is a, a reflection of Web3. I think it's probably more a reflection of um, some snapshot of researchers that are in some way, I managed to find you or you managed to find me, but nonetheless, We've got um, no big surprise. Most people here are interested in DAOs. And then from there, we get a, a bunch of sorts of what may be kind of social science types of topics, governance and politics. And I'm really uh, I'm surprised and warm to see that so many people are really deeply interested in ethics and values and, 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 and on and on it goes down there, kind of a bit of a, a long tail. So that's a little bit about sort of who we are. We're also about half of us teaching classrooms. The other maybe salient fact is that there's a, a significant bit of expertise in the room as well. Uh, uh, the majority of us have spent uh, upwards of, of or more than five years researching the topic. I, I don't pretend to have any interest in sort of trying to define Web3. I think that's much of what we're working on here. But I'll just introduce um, some suggestions because I think Web3 is both a useful piece of nomenclature, but also a really troubled and troubling one. So first of all, Web3, well, some people say it's just like a branding exercise. Maybe it's a branding exercise by Gavin Wood, or maybe some people say it's a Silicon Valley style sort of whitewash of crypto. Um, it's deeply associated with the Ethereum community. So there seems to be some resonance there. Other people might imagine it to be some kind of solar punk paradise or a social movement or even just a simple technology. So those are some options for how we might consider Web3. If I can I'll offer two sort of potted histories, not so much to get us to focus on the, the dynamics of the history, but rather actually to get us to think a little bit beyond the, these histories. So the first is the one that's right in the name, Web3. Well, of course, this is the sort of end user functionality history that we're familiar with. It starts with Web1, the broadcast model. This is HTML pages. We, we, we very much know, um, you know, sort of the emergence of this in, into the 90s and then the 2000s, we have the Web2, read, write web. It's the social web. Here we have the emergence of MySpace and what then becomes Meta and Google and so on and so forth. And then on this telling, now we're at Web3, which seems to be, okay, now it's a sort of an exchange of value. Economics is built in. That's one way to carve up Web3. Another, and I think arguably slightly more interesting, would be to focus a little bit on the sort of political economics of it, the history as the ARPANET emerges in 1969, going all the way forward to about 1993, where we see the US government transitioning into first the NSF net, and then finally into commercialization. And then from 1993 until, I like to think of it about 2013, we have this really interesting period of internet history. Many of us, we'll have sort of cut our theoretical teeth on the research and literature that comes out of this period. It's a period of rapid internet commercialization. And also I think it's very important to uh, mention a rapid period of securitization, both in the sense of the emergence of multinational platforms, but also just security technologies start to get very robust at this point. And 2013 for me is the dividing point because this of course is when Edward Snowden basically tells us how the internet's really working. And as it turns out, security works, but with a bunch of important caveats. And then of course, that doesn't quite drive exactly with the emergence of the 2000, uh, 
eight, nine emergence of Bitcoin in the decade following, which we now sort of start to uh, associate with Web3. So I think we're here in the Web3 where we're now remaking e-commerce, Peer-to-peer is essential, DeFi and ReFi and these sorts of things are emerging. We have a blurring of work and play, increased uh, gamification and the selling of in-game items and skins and so on and so forth. There's the metaverse and there's the social applications. And then finally DAOs, which um, I like to think of as a kind of a social movement. And, you know, we might even say just a, a subreddit with wallets or something like that. So I'll just really quickly give two examples. I assume everyone here is probably pretty familiar with Discord, but on the chance that you haven't seen uh, what the chaos that is Discord, this is where a lot of the nuts and bolts of Web3 happens. Here I'm just showing you friends with benefits, a kind of social club, very fascinating uh, group of individuals doing all kinds of interesting work, everything from artists to uh, folks who listen to music together, to um, uh, purchasing assets, to just general mayhem. A different example would be Lobby 3, which is a, another DAO that uh, in this case is one that has very concrete political ends. It's, uh, um, it, it's, it's a, there we are. It's, as we say here, it's a, a, it's a, a community to, to basically do um, politics by a different mechanism. And I'm not showing uh, Lobby 3 or Friends with Benefits as a kind of opportunity to, you know, to say that they're doing so, things that are so uh, great and wonderful. And this is, these are great examples of Web3, but rather that these are some of the various different ways that Web3 can get uh, imagined. And before I proceed, I just want to say a couple words about our sponsors, the Smart Contract Research Forum. I want to mention them, one, because they made this all possible, but also they're uh, a very valuable resource. And there's two things I want to highlight on the uh, Smart Contract Research Forum website. The first is the excellent work that's getting done around um, sort of meta-analysis of research and the coordination efforts. And so I won't spend too much time kind of going through what Smart Contract Research Reform is all about, but here's an example of um, some sort of ability to bubble up some of the important research that they, is uh, happening uh, at SCURF. And then the other thing I wanna mention is that there are opportunities for putting in uh, research proposals and grant proposals. So there's, an, there's alternative mechanisms um, for uh, being able to do research in Web3 that uh, of course SCURF supports, but there's many other Web3 uh, entities that do the same kind of thing. Uh, 